interviewing top sports personalities from around the nation in order to provide you next level insight and analysis into your Cleveland Browns. Blue Wire Hustle proudly presents All Eyes on Cleveland. And now, here is your host, Brad Ward. What is happening? My name is Brad Ward. I am your host. This is All Eyes on Cleveland. It is the last day of June. We have officially reached the dog days of summer as we await what could be a potentially epic season for our Cleveland Browns. The waiting is the hardest part right now uh, as we wait for training camp to kick off in late July. Lots of hype surrounding this team. But we have some fun things planned to keep you uh, entertained in this in these few weeks as we get closer uh, to camp. Uh, tonight we're going to recap minicamp here with uh, Cameron Justice who was at minicamp all three days. She killed the coverage, knocked it out of the park. She's an Emmy nominated sports journalist for WEWS uh, Channel 5 in Cleveland. And uh, she's awesome, and she is going to talk to us about what she saw at camp, and we're going to get to that interview momentarily. Uh, But we've got a lot planned, and we're going to talk about that after the interview. I've got a big, big show coming tomorrow night, massive show. You're going to love the premise of it, Uh, so stick around and hear about that, plus some other new things we're doing here at All Eyes on Cleveland. Uh, Keep it locked, as always, uh, um, right here, and, you know, help us out big time hit that like button hit subscribe keep coming back tell a friend we're growing uh, immensely every month and and it's all because of you so thank you so much for that and and keep doing keep doing those things uh they help us out so much mike you can kill that music good man mikey's on the ones and twos tonight um and uh we're gonna go ahead and and get this uh uh interview started here um, as Cameron uh, joins us uh, to talk about what happened at minicamp. Excellent interview here. Uh, it, she is fantastic. Her coverage is fantastic. If you just paid attention to her Twitter handle, at Cammy Justice through the whole minicamp, you would have gotten all the information that you needed from the Browns uh, as she knocked it out of the park. Uh, so let's, uh, without further ado, let's get you to that interview. And we'll come back right afterwards, and I want to talk about tomorrow night's show and the new website. Uh, once again, at the website, we've got the voicemail button up on the website. So you feel free to go to alleyesoncleveland.com, leave your voicemail. If you've got thoughts, opinions about anything Browns, we will play them on the air on the show. Hit the voicemail button uh, and leave your voice to be played uh, on the show whenever you want. Whenever you you want within reason within reason people let's you know come on all right uh let's uh mikey are we good to go here sir mikey's getting this ready for us all right so uh enjoy the interview we'll be back afterwards to talk about uh more of what uh, i really think you're going to enjoy tomorrow night show as well uh but this is a great interview with cameron justice about brown's minicamp 2021 And we are absolutely thrilled to welcome to All Eyes on Cleveland tonight, very, very special guest, Cameron Justice. Uh, Cameron is the digital content producer and an Emmy-nominated sports journalist covering the Browns, Cavs, and Indians at WEWS Channel 5 Cleveland. How are you doing tonight, Cameron? Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm excellent. We're uh, very excited to have you on. You know, we kind of had to postpone this one, but we still can take a look back at minicamp a little bit. You guys got, uh, you were there, right? Uh, So tell me a little bit about, I I talked to a couple people that were there. They still have the press confined to like one area of the field. Was it kind of limited what you could see or, or how was it? Yeah, so we were still a little bit back because of those COVID protocols and they're still working through those. Um, but uh, there was an area, I mean, they were working on all of the fields. So the areas in which the, the fields that were closer to our designated area, you got really good visuals up and close. And then 
I mean, with a camera, you can pretty much get across the field. So you could see what was going on across there. It was a little harder with the eye, but uh, you, you still got to look at pretty much all parts of the Browns, the offense, the defense, and the special teams were, were going at it. So we, we got a good look, and there were some moments that were a little bit closer than others. Uh, yeah. and, and those were a little bit more fun to, to observe and really got you know a good feel for how the, how the team is doing. But overall, we got to see a lot. That's awesome. Um, so you guys got three beautiful days, perfect attendance from the Browns. All in all, I got the feeling that after the three days were up, everybody left just feeling really, really good about things. Is that how you felt? Yeah, I mean, you could tell the vibes there. They were just, I mean, it's it's that gelling. There's a lot of yeah. cool players. Um, but they just seemed like they were happy to be there and happy to be around each other, which is, what, to me, more important because that's what you have to start to kind of build first is that chemistry between each other. Uh, you learn the playbook. You'll learn that as training camp goes on. But this this mini camp, I think, was more of a you know an introduction to each other and getting to know the guys that they're going to be playing with, uh, playing alongside, and the guys that they're going to be going against in training camp and having that iron sharpen iron and all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, I think that was – the vibes were, you know, that that positive. We're excited to be here. We're happy to be here, excited for this season. I think you could tell that with a lot of the players that were out there, that they're they're looking forward to see what they're able to bring to the Browns this season. Yeah, it seemed really positive. Um, so I'm going to bring up uh, some graphics here or some stuff from uh, pictures from minicamp and some of your tweets just to kind of go along here with us. I just want to say first and foremost, you absolutely killed the coverage on minicamp. I, I didn't have to go anyplace else. I knew you were coming on my show, so I just went to your timeline and you had everything covered, every quote, every picture, everything I needed. So you absolutely killed the coverage and, and made it easy to follow this year. So great job on that. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So let's... Uh, Bring this up. This is our show here today. Uh, and I just wanted to start out here, uh, Cameron, with the injured guys, okay? So we can start with, like, Grant Delpit um, here, you know, and we want to go through Grant and OBJ and Greedy is kind of what I'm focused on here. But with Grant Delpit, he was out there, right? And, and what did you see from him? I, all, you know, everything we heard was pretty positive. Was he look full go to you 80 percent what do you feel about grant uh so the thing that's hard to tell with this mini camp is it was a pretty slow pace they weren't i mean obviously not in pads not going up against each other full on you know and it wasn't a full speed kind of thing there were moments where you got to see some flashes and it was like okay there there you are there's that and so yeah. grant, grant and greedy and odell all had those moments where you saw, you know, a, a quick flash of run or a route running or something that got them, uh, you know, showing out their athleticism and showing what they they are capable of. I think that was a really good first look at what they're going to be able to do. So to say 100 percent, I wouldn't be able to say that they do look they did look really great and they look like, you know, they are ready and, and rearing to come back um, with with Grant specifically. He was out there. Um, with a lot of the first team stuff getting involved. He was also on the side a little bit, um, but he was involved and that's what's good to see. Uh, and, and that's what you, it, it gets you a little bit more hopeful that he is right on the on the verge of being able to be 100% for training camp. Uh, Greedy Williams, same thing. And that's, his injury is, uh, is definitely tough as well. A ner and any nerve injury, that's, that's a tough one, right? And so, we're going to see, you know, how that kind of plays out through camp. But he, like he said after after the mini camp and during his media sessions that he's confident and he feels like, you know, he's found himself again and he's ready to go. Um, and that it'll just come down to how the team feels, how his training staff and the, the, the doctors that are working with him through this injury, how they feel getting him in 100 percent when it comes to time for training camp and you know the full go we'll see how that progresses it might be a little bit of a slow start for him maybe like wean him into it uh because you don't want to do any more damage you know especially before the season begins you know you don't want that kind of situation to happen again so uh, i would expect to see him hopefully eventually at 100 percent by that time that camp is over heading into the season 
Um, but I would not be surprised if he's maybe a little bit more quiet at the start just to get him back in the groove of things, kind of ease his way in to, you know, full, full blown activity. And as for Odell, it was, um, it was a lot of individual workouts, but he did show some route running, get some, those, that quick jump you see here. I mean, he's able to do these things and that in itself is so impressive. Catch or no catch <laughs> on that picture. Let me say, catch or no catch, catch <laughs> that picture. It is still, it's not what's important here. What's important is the, like, the, the fact that he is getting up there and he's making that jump and he's extending his body the way he is post knee injury. That's it's a great sign. You see the videos on his on his social pages of him working out and running full go, and he's one that will, without a doubt in my mind, be a hundred percent ready to go. Yeah. So Odell, uh, I was surprised. Uh, obviously, I've watched all the hype videos and everything that he does on Instagram, right? And everybody watches that stuff. But I was surprised that he was even. You know, they were going not full go in like seven on sevens and team at team drills right like it, i was surprised that he was participated in day two like i thought after day one like okay they did individual drills i heard he looked really good i thought they'd kind of phase him out but he went hard day two two and got involved in the team drills which i was really surprised at he must be feeling really good and you see like it's like oh it's hard to watch some of those videos because he's just putting so much stress on that knee, like the cut that, you know, like the, the that leg. And it's like, oh, my gosh, how can he do that already? Uh, he's a freak uh, <laughs> specimen. Yeah, for real. Um, you know, Grant Delpit, I think you feel good about. I, I, my concern, Cameron, with Greedy is I think a lot of like what they have to evaluate with him will probably be more like when they get the pads on considering the nerve damage, right? Absolutely. And I think that will be why he's a little bit more of a slow go to introduce him back into these things, because that's yeah. not something that you want to tweak again. And that's a really difficult injury to target. I mean, Odell's injury and Grant Delpit's injury, obviously not great injuries. Those are tough ones to recover from, too. But the recovery is I mean, they had you have the surgery, then you have the rehab process. And I mean, if if your surgery goes well and, you, and you've got those doctors on your side, uh, it's a little bit more of a clear cut path to getting back than than a nerve injury is. It's not that same kind of rehabilitation process. Um, and so I do think that it might be a little bit more time on greedy just to get him back up to back up to speed and getting ready because you don't want to you don't want to heighten that injury again. You don't want to tweak it. You, you just want to yep. make sure it's it's good to go and it's hard to tell. But what you will see, uh, and I think we'll see him kind of incline as as training camp goes on you'll see more action out of him as they deem him fit to to be able to participate a little bit more and a little heavier yeah i know they have some real specific benchmarks for each of these guys so it feels it feels like obj and delpit will be about 100 percent by camp right and i think that greedy will probably get worked in a little bit more like you said probably with the physical stuff uh, and the hitting, especially when they get pads on. Another guy that's coming off of injury or an injury season, and, and this guy, he just seemed like, I, I didn't expect it, uh, but Jadavian Clowney just seemed like the happiest dude, like, in the world. Like, so I was, like, reading some of your your tweets here and looking at some of the pictures, but he just seemed so happy. And this was, the, this was just jumping back real quick. This was your tweet on... Baker talking about OBJ. He looks really great. After seeing him run, uh, talking to him, he feels comfortable. He's talking about seven months in surgery. It's really impressive how quickly he's come back. Uh, and then that picture there. And all these pictures are actually courtesy of Matt Starkey, so it's good that you put that there. Uh, and the Cleveland Browns. But, yeah, so so Jadavian Clowney, right? And, and he just seems so happy. I, like, I couldn't get over it. Like, I didn't expect that. Uh, he's very excited about the rotational group on the defensive line and how much talent there is among them. Uh, said the team already feels like a family, <laughs> and they already know each other and uh, have each other's backs, right? And, like, just look at him. I mean, he was goofing around. He had big smiles on the whole time. So is that how he was pretty much the whole time? He just seemed really happy to be a Cleveland Brown. Yeah, I mean, and that was – so that was one of um, – the positional groups that were closer on the closer field stuff on that first day. 
And so you got that up close look. You could hear them talking to each other and joking with each other and having fun with each other. And I mean, and they were even chirping a little bit at the media, like, hey, we're going to do this drill kind of thing back and forth. And they were having a great time. And so that's what you love to see. I mean, you've got this new guy here. He's a big name. Uh, and there was, I mean, he was, he's been on the radar for Cleveland for some time. Things didn't work out. Now he's here, though. He's here. And he's, he and and he seems like this is, it's not just like he, eh, he settled for Cleveland. He wants to be here. And he's excited to work with these guys. And that whole defensive, the defensive line, the outside, the ins- they're all just having a great time, you know, talking to each other, asking each other for advice and working through some things. And I think that's really, really good because a, a player like Jadavian Clowney, he can provide so much for those rotational pieces. And, and I mean, Miles Garrett, obviously this giant leader on the Browns. And then you add a piece like Jadavian Clowney, who's willing to step up and do a similar role uh, and, and kind of be a part of this organization and really, you know, take it to heart. I think that's incredible for the other pieces that you've got, the rotational pieces, the Takaris McKinley's who are are here and ready to be involved, uh, the Porter Gustin who's ready to fill that role in those rotational pieces. I think that kind of having that family feeling, like he said, is so crucial. And especially because, you know, you're going to have him playing inside, you're going to have him playing outside, and you've got a lot of that, the defensive tackle position is one that's one of the biggest positional battles in training camp coming up. You've got a lot of new talent and a lot of guys that are going to be fighting for that spot and who's going to start, who's going to do what. And, you know, just having him out there and and talking to them alongside Miles Garrett and having that defense really gelling together, I think is really great. And, and you did see that during, during mini camp, you could see just that kind of fun, spirited, happy to be here mentality from all of them. And they were just really vibing. And that's really good to see. That's really good to see. Yeah, really awesome to see. I like I, I didn't expect that from him of all people. And I I mean I don't know him enough to judge one way or the other, but I was just kind of shocked at like how, you know, everything he said was so positive. Every all the pictures you see him, he's just got a big grin on his face. Uh Brown Shadavian Clowney, this is you again here, Cameron Justice, and we are talking with Cameron Justice of uh, WEWS Channel 5 uh, Cleveland. She's an Emmy-nominated sports journalist covering the Browns, Cavs, and Indians. Um, joining All Eyes on Cleveland here tonight to recap and break down a little bit of minicamp, which she was uh, in attendance for. Uh, the Browns, uh, Jadavian Clowney, on getting to play with Miles Garrett. I haven't ran into many guys like that in the National Football League. Said it took him eight years in the league to run into another player like him. Uh, like himself. That's uh, good stuff. And then here he is again, loving more stuff. Brown's uh, Jadavian Clowney loves his job. Uh, always enjoy playing football, being out there with my teammates. It's not really a job. We have the best job in the world. Why not put a smile on your face when you're out there running around and they pay you for this? And he took that literally because he was smiling the whole time. So that was pretty awesome. Uh, so transitioning away from Jadavian Clowney a little bit, which was a great surprise. And I think, you know, the thing about it, Cameron, that I think that sticks with me the most is like the the culture change, right? Like from what it was to what it is now post Stefanski, post one season Stefanski, one season Andrew Barry, like how different the culture is to the point where like a guy like that can come in and immediately it's like infectious, right? It's incredible how how quickly the tides have turned in Cleveland. Uh, And it's just, it's, and it's a widespread. I mean, everyone has had this shared mentality and it's been this way since last season, all of last season, there wasn't really a moment where you questioned, is this real? I mean, the, the most, the biggest question was, is this, is this real as in the sense of, can this really be happening for Cleveland? Because it's been so long since anything like this has happened. A team like this has been assembled and it starts at the top and it starts with Kevin Stefanski and it starts with Andrew Barry. And I think that they have been total game changers, not only in creating this roster that we're seeing out here and getting these guys and getting this talent and making this on paper, one of the strongest teams in the NFL, but not, not only that, but changing the way that the players and the fans and the world sees Cleveland. I mean, you're, you're changing that narrative and it's not easy to do. That's not something that happens overnight, but one season deep and we're already kind of changing the way that we consider the Browns, not just us. I mean, obviously we're here, we're, we're local, we're, we're, 
we're rooted in watching Cleveland and watching the Browns, yeah. but it's at a national level too. You've got some outliers, and we don't want to talk about them, but a lot of the next <laughs> media has really picked up on the, the on the sense that this the tides have changed. You cannot talk about the Browns the same way that you used to, and I think that's that's really a testament to to the team itself, but also yeah to Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Barry. They deserve so much credit for for what what we're talking about right now. Yeah, no question. And guys like Jarvis and Batonia, right? Like the guys that were here before it changed and after. It just like you've got to feel so good for those guys, and they have had such an impact. I think. Yeah, um, so here's uh, JOK, right? Uh, whatever he's got like a million nicknames now or whatever. So uh, yeah, I'm sticking with JOK for now. But uh, you know, Jeremiah Wosu Koromoa, uh, Brown's second round. You know second first round pick right they had steal in the second round here where did uh i'm curious from you watching where did he get most of his reps is he at linebacker most of the time he's at linebacker most of the time uh which is what the browns said that he would be and that's i mean that's what he is but he does have that versatility i know that's what we're getting at here he has that versatility and i think that's what makes him such an explosive piece and and one of my favorite things that the browns have done uh i think like you said, a total steal in the draft. Uh, and I think that, and I've said this before, I think he's got the potential to be uh, one of the biggest pieces of the Browns defense this year. And I think that he's going to be, if, if if what he's able to do and the way that his athleticism plays out and, you know, that versatility be between positions and, and being able to, to move across the field and, and be used in different ways, if that's able to be capitalized on by the Browns, by Joe Woods, uh, I think that he's going to have a standout rookie season, and it's going to be something that people talk about. He's going to be one of those players that he's going to make a name for himself in his first year if he's able to be utilized in the way that, that we all think and we all see that he can be. You know, I totally agree because, and I was listening to somebody talk about this, and it was like they were talking about how many of like the top 10 or top 15 offenses in the league – that the trend now with those offenses like last year in the league was they're all really good play action teams, right? And I, I was like listening to them talk about that, and they were like, how do you defend that? How are we going to see teams adjust to that? And they're like, well, the teams that already can do it are like the guy teams with guys like Devin White and Darius Leonard. And I'm thinking, okay, perfect, right? Because JOK is that type of guy, right? Like he can take a step in towards the run, and still recover to you know to the pass game and not most linebackers can't do that and you need almost need a guy like that with the the way the the league is trending as far as the play action game and that's what they've all been talking about even you know the players that are in it right now they they see that this is kind of a transition this is where the league is headed towards are these players like Jeremiah Wusukormo who has been compared in fact to what, what he's been able to show to a Darius Leonard type player and and that's kind of what People are expecting him to grow into uh, this season, which would be incredible for the Browns. Yeah. Uh, but but you, you see these things, uh, you see these players who are able to do this and, and, and across the league, it is something that's very important uh, to the way that the, the league is going. And I think that having a player like this is going to bode very well for Cleveland um, and the defensive looks they're going to be able to throw at their opponents all season long. And it mixes it up because – I mean, whatever you want to do, you've got players across the board, and and that's kind of been the what seems like the focus of of this off season, of getting guys that are versatile and no are speedy. and so and you've got that you've got both you've got speed and you got versatility in Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa and across players that they've gotten in free agency, uh, players that they've drafted, the Browns have really focused on that. I think. I think that's going to be something that they're looking to be able to exploit when it comes to other teams, both offensively and defensively, because that's been the target for the Browns uh, of, of speeding up their roster and making it a little bit more versatile and, and getting a lot of different options about the looks they're able to give other teams. For sure. Speed. Absolutely. Uh, must needed and, and added and, and uh, 
I think it'll make a big difference, too. And, and we know Joe Woods, you know, wants to run that dime with three safeties, too. That just makes him even faster. So it should be really interesting to see how, how that defense comes together this year. It should be a lot of fun. Uh, you're watching All Eyes on Cleveland. Special guest Cameron Justice, uh, digital content producer and Emmy-nominated sports journalist covering your Cleveland Browns, Cavs, and Indians for WEWS Channel 5 in Cleveland. Uh, she's been terrific so far. She was at Browns Mini Camp. We're doing a little Browns Mini Camp breakdown here. Um, how did Baker look for the most part? Uh, I have your tweets here. You know, Alex Van Pelt gave him some concepts and progressions, and he said that he, you know, pretty much killed him, right? Or he owned them. Um, you tweeted out, and then uh, also Alex Van Pelt on Baker Mayfield. Uh, he's in great, in a great spot physically. Uh, how did you think he, he looked overall for the most part? Baker Mayfield has really, since last offseason, been dedicated to getting his body ready to go. And, and now, and you see this season, keeping his body ready to go. That was a big topic of debate last year. I know, uh, you know Baker, Mayfield, <laughs> Baker Mayfield's weight and his body. And that, I mean, then, and as much as it's, you know, a little eh, to talk about, it is important with, a, with an athlete. And that is something you no have doubt. to hear. Um, and so the fact that he lost weight, toned up, really dedicated himself in the gym and and prepared for last season and then he saw the results uh and he really benefited from that last season and you know it's it's very easy like any of us during the pandemic or you know just <laughs> sitting on our couches it's very easy to pack on a couple pounds when you're when you're not doing anything uh and and you know baker mayfield has had it it's been the off season and you know, there's always that potential of a player coming in a little bit out of shape, a little bit, you know, you, you got to do some conditioning. You got to maybe get them on a, a diet plan or workout plan to get them back where you want. Baker Mayfield came in and, and looked great and looks look like he he's taken it to heart since the end of last season. I don't think there was uh, much of a stop. I think that he's really been focusing. And that's really great to see that not only dedication to his game and his craft, in mini camp and heading into training camp, but on the off season, he's taken this very seriously. And I think that he saw how important it was um, last off season to, to get in that, stay in that groove and to keep focusing on yourself. There's, there's like, there are days off. I'm sure that they have days where they relax, but there's really no days off, especially when you're the quarterback of the Cleveland Browns and you are that guy and you've got your contract up in the air and you're looking, looking to see if you can get extended and you can, you can get a, a big deal here and, and stay with Cleveland long term. And so those days off, I don't think have really happened for Baker. I think that he's kind of thinking football pretty much every day, even when, yeah. he's, even, even when he's relaxing. And so it's really good to see. And then through mini camp, um, you know, you just saw him run through some of those progressions uh, and, and do those, those quick little drills. Um, but it looked like, and they were one of the, the uh, positions that were kind of across the field a little further away. Uh -huh. It did look like there was some of that footwork that Alex Van Pelt was working on him with last year. Um, yeah. And, and that was really good to see. I think that's one of the big things with Baker Mayfield is just continuing that progress through his footwork. Uh, they switched his leg, just getting, getting him and then, and getting him r relaxed physically so that mentally he can make those reads uh, and, and do those things very smoothly. And we saw that progress last season as the season went on. He kind of got better. He went through his re he wasn't, oh, he didn't become a one look quarterback. He, he, he got better at doing those things. And that's something that I think is hand in hand with that, the physical nature of that footwork, those steps, the progressions and what Alex Van Pelt has been teaching him. Once that becomes muscle memory, your brain doesn't have to think about it. Your brain can focus on other things. And I think we saw that with Baker. So Seeing that happen and, and going through those during mini camp, I think was really promising because that's just honing that up and making sure that's still muscle memory so that, you know, his brain can focus elsewhere and, and look at those reads and, and, and see, you know, what they're putting out there on the field offensively and, and give them the option and make him a better quarterback when it comes to reading the defenses and, and seeing, you know, what their offense is doing out there on the field. So refreshing that he finally gets to come back to the same coaching staff. And I think it's like 
the the 13 other offensive players that played over 300 snaps every single one is coming back i mean there couldn't be any more continuity after all the changing and switching and you know nonsense he's been through since day one here uh i mean i'm just so excited to see how this offense evolves with him there and him what appears to be maturing right before our eyes a little bit i think so absolutely uh, yeah all right a uh, couple throw a couple quick questions at you here and we'll wrap things up i know you can't say too long here uh biggest surprise from three days at minicamp biggest surprise honestly this is what we were talking about before just the way that this team has really become like really great friends even even the newbies are you know they're getting in there they're throwing jabs at each other they're having fun and <laughs> i mean the fact that they're able to bond so quickly i think that's just it, it was, and it shouldn't be a surprise because you know you, you're supposed to do what you love, and this is a, this is the game that they've been passionate about since you know they were probably in middle school or even earlier. So, uh, like Jadavian Clowney said, you know you, it's, it's the best job in the world. I think a lot of those guys feel that way. Uh, so it shouldn't be such a surprise, but it was really cool to see you know that kind of brotherhood and you know family family ties already being made and established in just three days together. So that that to me was my biggest like, oh wow, this is this culture is a lot different than it used to be kind of moment. Yeah, no question. Uh that that is I I was surprised at that actually too, that everybody was so kumbaya and it, and I love it, right? It it speaks to the culture. Um Demetric Felton I'm curious about some position battles as we go to our training camp. How did Demetric Felton look? I, I, is he going to challenge Dearness Johnson for that job, you think? He could. And that's the other thing. That's one of those versatile guys that we were talking about earlier. I mean, he he had reps at running back at wide receiver. Uh, yeah. You know, he's a special teams guy. He does it all. Um, and so I do think that he's he's going to be one of those names that – that might pop up in training camp during these battles, and I, the, the other guys on the team, they they got to come prepared. They got to stay ready because he's gunning for them, and he he has a lot to offer across the board. So with him, whatever he ends up doing, I do I do see a spot on the roster for him just because he is so versatile. They can use him in so many different ways. That wouldn't be a guy that you would want to to kind of forget about. He's he's able to do so many things for you. So. I can see him earning his spot here on the Browns because of that versatility. And, you know, I mean, that also doesn't discredit the skills that he has. He's he's great at what he does, which is everything. <laughs> and he's fast and he's exactly what that the Browns need in a, in a way, not only positionally, but to provide depth. I think that he's a really good piece for that because you can plug him in in so many different spots. Uh, you, I mean, if you have him running back, you can have him in the slot, you can have him returning punts or kicks if you need him to like, and you just work on him with different things and he's just so so many different things he can bring to your team he's one of those guys that i think the browns are going to really look to, to 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 do a lot of different things on the field yeah i, I really like that pick a lot i'm a big fan of Demetri felton so i'm kind of rooting for him a little bit um i sent you over i did a uh, uh article two critical takeaways from training camp i just want to get your thoughts on these real quick Maybe I'm way off base, uh, but uh, we'll see what you think here. So, and I use your tweets in them because yeah, I thought you were coming on the show. But anyways, got your stuff out there as you can see. Um, but yeah, so uh, talked about the weather being ideal, all that stuff. But my first takeaway was that Greg Newsom uh, during OTAs and uh, my understanding at mandatory minicamp uh, was getting some reps inside uh, in the slot in the nickel corner. And for me, that was huge because my concern here, I guess, Cameron, was last year uh, guys were forced into action in that position, MJ Stewart, Tavier Thomas, that really shouldn't have been forced into action. And it was a really weaker spot, uh, especially, I mean, Tavier Thomas didn't even play it down on defense when he started to over the position in last year. So, you know, Troy Hill loved the pickup probably one of the best you know nickel corners you can get but i worry about like okay what if he has to go outside for some reason or what if you know he has whatever reason goes down or gets dinged for a game who do they have there it was very refreshing for me to see greg newsome inside because it adds 
a little bit of a alleviates for me a little bit of a depth problem if he can play in there uh did you think he could play in there from what you saw does it seem like there that's something they're committed to because it wasn't really something that he profiled at as a draft pick i think that they what especially in mini camp it's a lot and and you'll see in training camp it's a lot of trying things out and seeing where you're able to go uh, and you saw that with other positions but yeah greg newsom is one of those that you know they definitely would that would be a huge benefit for the browns to have that depth that's one thing that andrew barry talked about uh you know heading into this off season was you can never have too many corners and you know that the browns did suffer because of injuries and you know, that the lack of depth. And so now you've seen this focus with the, you know, the addition of Troy Hill. You get Greedy Williams back, Denzel Ward's here. You got MJ Stewart back. And, you know, you've got you've got a lot more guys here ready ready to, to go. And, and so now you've got Greg Newsome. So, yeah, to be able to have him play inside would be huge for them, especially yeah. if you have a guy like Troy Hill go down for a couple games, just, a, a, you know, something small, even just a little tweak, and he's out – for, you know, just even a little bit of the game as a game changer. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw him, you know, try to get into that role a little bit more here through training camp and get him, get him prepared um, at this point because it wasn't, you know, a huge profile for him. Should we expect that to be his starting position where he's, you know, starting off at? Maybe not. Um, but that's something maybe you experiment with and you see how he's able to, to look on the field. So I think that I think you're spot on there and – you know, that would be something that the Browns would really like to see because it can't hurt. <laughs> it can't hurt to get him better at a no, one no. with Troy Hill. Even uh, I mean, he was pretty new to playing inside and he just kind of was great at it. And yeah. it, was, it was a natural fit for him. So you might see something like that. Maybe that happens uh, with Greg Newsom where they, they try it out and it just works out really well for him. And and you see him kind of shine in that role, just like Troy Hill did last season. Um and now he gets to Dre Hill gets to do it again and bring it back with the Browns this time and and so we'll we'll see how that plays out but I think it's really beneficial and I think Joe Woods has to be very excited about what he's going to be able to do. Yeah, we had Troy Hill on the show so we're a like, huge and like before before he came on the show I, I was like they got to go get Troy Hill, you know, I was talking, you know, especially after they got John Johnson I was like, you know, they got to upgrade that nickel uh corner position it's a cheap easy way to get better and and I, we were talking about it on the show all the time and then his agent saw that we were talking about it and was like thanks for the support after he signed and i was like let me get an interview so he came on the show it's pretty awesome so uh yeah we're big troy hill fans here on all eyes on cleveland who is it? so who is it? <laughs> yeah right uh okay uh cameron last question here for you I, my other observation or takeaway was that Sounds like Donovan Peoples Jones uh, changed his body some uh, and looked really good at camp. For me, the quarter, the wide receiver room, pardon me, is a kind of a question mark after 2021. So if he could be like a legit wide receiver too in the future, that answers a lot of questions, I think, for the Browns. Um, is did that what you saw? Is that what you was one of your takeaways? Did you see anything that uh, can you? Can you confirm my uh, my takeaway? Uh, I can confirm, and I will say I've talked about this before too. Uh, Donovan Peoples Jones is one of the players I think, or he's the one to watch, and he's one of the biggest pieces uh, the Browns have in this young guys uh, on the roster. It's a very young team. There's a lot of players that are 25 and under, and you know. Donovan Peoples-Jones is one of those guys that's at the top of the list because of not only the talent that he's able to bring. You saw last season, you know, he shined in, in really big moments and he was able to be so clutch. And he already has like this weirdly quick chemistry with Baker Mayfield. And it's probably because his body size is very tall, very yeah. athletic. Um, and so, yeah, and, and, you know, he spent this off season working in the gym. So you've got, you've got, even more conditioning done over this past off season heading into the 2021 season. And you know what he's able to bring to this team is going to be incredible because it's not only this season and seeing him, you know, in that wide receiver three position, trying to get his roles in there next to Jarvis and Odell, but we don't know what happens with Jarvis and Odell, what happens with their contracts, what the future holds. And Donovan Peoples Jones is one of those young guys that, yeah, wide receiver two position, who knows how he develops. He could be one of the top receivers on this team for years to come. You know, I mean, he's 
he's got that ability. He's got that talent and he's got the youth and he's, he's new, he's young, he's fresh. And I think that he's one of the guys that he's going to be a name in Cleveland and he should be, if he grows into what he's already shown us. Um, I think that, you know, you, you, it's, it's hard to put a value on, on him in Cleveland because it's so crucial to have a player like that and to have that, you know, that kind of type of receiver that has the ability to connect with your quarterback and then to have him for years to come. You're not worried about the contract. Oh, maybe I have to pay him a ton of money next year. What are we going to do? Are oh, we going to lose him? You've got him for some time. So you've got time to work with him and then even get even better with that chemistry and, and have him – look even better with your team. So Donovan Peoples-Jones has been one of the players that I think is like one of the most important roles in Cleveland. And it's agreed. It's, yeah. it's, it's very easy to forget. It's very easy to forget when you're talking receiver room, because obviously this season you've got Jarvis and Odell, and then you've got the beloved Cleveland icon, Richard Hollywood Higgins. Yep. And then, you know, and Donovan Peoples-Jones is kind of a little back there in, in the conversations, but I think, you know, depending on, how the future of the Browns plays out and the wide receiver room plays out. I think Dominic Peoples Jones is going to be one of those names. You're going to be like, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He's really good. He's really good. We're glad to have him. I think that I think Browns fans can get excited about him. And I think this season might be a standout season for him as well to show exactly what you have to look forward to in the years to come with him on your roster. I agree. I couldn't have said it better myself. Uh, thank you so much, Cameron. You've been fantastic. You are an incredible interview. Your coverage of uh, uh, training camp was fantastic, or, or mini camp was fantastic. And uh, I suggest everybody out there that's a Browns, Cavs, or Indians fan follow you on Twitter. They can follow you on Twitter at Cami Justice, right? Uh, it's C A M I Justice. Is that correct? Correct. All right. And uh, she is a digital content producer and Emmy nominated sports journalist covering your Cleveland Browns, Cavs and Indians for WEWS Channel 5 in Cleveland. Cameron, thank you so much for your time. You're fantastic. Thanks, Brad. It was, it was really fun. I had a great time. All right. Awesome. And we are back after that uh, short break. That was Cameron Justice doing an outstanding job breaking down Brown's minicamp. Tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m., same station, be here for our AFC North Offensive Draft featuring the one and only Jake Burns, Doug Maurice and Sam Penix. All three guys will be here with us. We're going to do a draft where you can take one quarterback, one running back, two wide receivers, one tight end, one guard, one tackle, one center, and you can take them from any team in the AFC North. We'll have the teams laid out at the end and see who drafts the best team. It should be entertaining, quite entertaining. Uh, very talented guys uh, joining us for that so that should be a blast. Uh, I also want to point you in the right direction as far as our brand new website before we go here today. It's at www.alleyesoncleveland.com. And we're just going to get a quick sneak peek here for you of the new website. We're awful proud of it, but here it is. Okay. Up at the top here, you can go episodes about the show. Uh, we have our show store, which are our customized t-shirts. 
We have uh, reviews of the show. Here is your Fanatics and Vivid Seats page, which you can go to. And obviously, oh, I guess not. Maybe you can't go there. Uh, I'm just kidding. You can. But, uh, yeah, it will take you there, and it will uh, give you this here. Uh, your uh, Fanatics and Vivid Seats. You can access your Vivid Seats here. Get your Browns tickets. You can go to your Fanatics here and get your deals. I will have promo codes for you. Uh, you can subscribe for the newsletter. The newsletter will be coming out, and you can listen to uh, the show on any of these platforms here, including uh, YouTube, the one we're on right now, Apple, Spotify, uh, Google Podcasts, Overcast, Castro, all that stuff. Uh, but if we go back to home here, uh, you get a look at, uh, obviously, the YouTube channel right here. Uh, it's our last show uh we had up with uh, Josh Keatley, Ask Me Anything, uh, and then it has all of the episodes going down. Uh, the uh, Twitter uh, right here. And, of course, uh, Facebook. And then, once again, our sponsors, uh, Fanatics and Vivid Seats. So, uh, this is the website. Now, if you look down in the corner down here in the right... Uh, right corner, bottom right corner, you can see uh, the little blue icon. That is the voicemail icon. I encourage you all to please go ahead, hit the voicemail icon, and tell uh, me how you feel about uh, the show, about the Browns, anything you want. We will play it on the air, within reason, of course. But, uh, yeah, that, that's awesome, and we would uh, be happy for you to do that. If you have any reason to contact the show, you can do that at the contact page here. And this is about the show here, a uh, podcast that interviews top personalities in the Cleveland and national landscape discussing the pressing issues that face your Cleveland Browns, hosted and produced by Brad Ward, uh, a Blue Wire Hustle production. And there it is. So that is the website, the new website. Uh, that is upgraded and, and very, very nice, I must say, and still working on more things to add to it. So check it out. It's awesome. But remember that, that, uh, little voicemail down there at the bottom, that's the way to go. We will play your voicemails on the air. And I just wanted to show off the page a little bit, show where you can go to get tickets, where you can go to get Fanatics gear, because they have stuff on sale right now for like $13 t-shirts, Browns t-shirts and stuff like that, Eleven ninety nine Browns t-shirts on Fanatics right now. It's pretty sick. So uh, that link is in the bottom of this description as well. Hit the like button, hit subscribe, come back tomorrow night, AFC North Draft with Jake Burns, Doug A. Marie, Sam Penix, and myself, uh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, you can pick a quarterback, running back, two wide receivers, tight end, guard, tackle, center. Who will pick the best team? It will be great. Big thanks to Cameron Justice doing our breakdown and rundown on the uh, uh, minicamp. We've got a little uh, quote here. Uh, CJ says DPJ is the one to watch. Uh, 100% agree. Uh, me too. Me too too, Ken, uh, and that is uh, the way to go there. So, uh, everybody, uh, thank you for watching the show today, and meet me back here 7.30 p.m. tomorrow night for the AFC North Draft. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. I'm trying to keep you entertained here in the dog days of summer as, once again, as I said at the beginning, the waiting is the hardest part as we wait for this season to come uh, with much anticipation. Big thanks to Mikey on the ones and twos, Cameron Justice for being uh, an excellent guest in covering minicamp so well. My name is Brad Ward. This has been another edition of All Eyes on Cleveland. And with that, we are out.